is Eric Grundeman. I'm the co-writer and co-producer of this film. Rick Jacobson, uh, co-writer, co-producer, and director. Really? You did that? Thankfully, I still have a very good relationship with the uh, people that uh, we made Hercules and Xena with. And so, uh, yeah, we, we, we wanted to pepper this movie with uh, quite a few fun cameos for anybody who was watching and go, oh, that's pretty amusing. And so, uh, yeah, I called, uh, I called Lucy and Renee. And well, said, originally, we, we thought about, like, Lucy, Ren, Kevin, and yes. we thought, oh, you know, let's not dip into the Xena Herc bag, you know, because it's, you know, we're, so we, we tabled it for a while. But then we just, we kind of kept going, you know, or, or, or are we being stupid for not taking advantage of that? Uh, yeah, I think it was even more about, wouldn't it be funny to technically exploit them in our little exploitation film? Yeah. And, uh, and so I think I called, I called Lucy and Renee, or sent them an email, like, making this little movie called Bitch Slap. Lo exploitation movie. Love to have you guys come out for a day to play nuns. Dot, dot, dot. Love, Eric. <laughs> Eric emailed us and we said, yeah. you bet. Hey, hey ladies, you want to play? That was pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> That's all he had to do. What is it that troubles your sister? Please help me, Mother Superior. I emailed back saying it's outrageous, it's hilarious. Can't wait. That's what I said. Are you sure? I did. I read it. I read it. Oh, you did? Yeah. I didn't read it. They yeah, didn't funny. I wonder why he didn't send it to me. Do you think he, he did. thought I would have... Didn't he? Oh, do you think maybe it was in an attachment? Attachment. Yeah, should yeah. Okay, whatever you want. Uh, Sorbo, I talked to him, you know, fairly frequently, so I just called him and said, making a little movie called Bitch Lab. It's not quite in the image that you project in all of your family-friendly films, but although uh, he did want to play Gage. Uh, yes, he, he loved. Oh, I don't. He loved. He loved Gage. Yeah, he did. He did love Gage. So I'd love to play. Yeah, no, he said he'd love to play Deputy Fuchs. He, oh, that's yeah, right. Yeah, he that's right. Kevin. Kevin <laughs> Kevin read, Kevin read right. the script. He goes, I, I set up the script, and he, right. uh, and he, gets, he said, I love your script. It's, uh, it's fantastic. It made me laugh. It made me cry. I would like to play Deputy Fuchs. And so I had to call him back and say, well, Kevin, did, you read, the, did you read the character yeah, line? Yeah, I said, uh, yeah, I said Kevin, uh, well, there's a couple problems. First of all, we found somebody that we love for Deputy Fuchs and Ron Melendez. And two, Deputy Fuchs is supposed to be like 23 years old. And, you know, and, it's supposed uh, and, to be a possible love interest yeah, for Trixie. Right, exactly. Yeah. And we're like, uh, you know, not saying that you're not still 23, but, uh, you know, you have a little more of a mature, harder edge to you than uh, than that character, uh, you know, lovable Deputy Fuchs. So, um, so I said, but I would like you to play uh, Mr. Yeah. Phoenix. <laughs> but then, you may have to do three iron this time. <laughs> I, I got a call from Eric Grundeman, my old producer from Hercules, and he said he's doing this movie. But he just, I said, I'd love to read the script. So I read the script, and he said Michael Hurst is playing the, the you know, this guy, and you know, we got this person playing this person. He didn't name off the people, and I said, well, why can't I be in this? And he said, he said, well, there actually is one part left. I mean, we only need you for maybe a day, but, you know, if you want the part, take the part. So I said, I take it. Hey, Kevin! Oh, oh my God, God, what are we doing here? Oh, my God! <laughs> it's good to see you. We it. just did this, but we're doing it again yeah, yeah. to the camera. It was a man hug. No, okay. It was a man hug, that's right. <laughs> yeah, broke, yeah, broke back acting. Very good to see you. How long has it been, guys? It's been two and a half years. Two and a half years? Yep. Two and a half years. I went and saw, I was, I was, I was doing a convention down in, in, in Sydney, in Melbourne, and uh, he was doing a very strange play, making love to a goat. <laughs> and, and that was right. That was I saw the opening. The opening day. You can cut the goat stuff out. <laughs> yeah, he had worked with Michael, so I said, "Well, absolutely, Michael would be great." So we sort of sent him the script, and I said, "You know, Michael, I'd like. I'm writing this movie called Bitch Up. I just want to hear your opinion. You know, I, I really, you know, I, don't, I have no idea, you know, if you're even into it or whatever. But I'd just like to hear what you think of the script." And he read it, and like two days later, he called me from New Zealand. He goes, "I want to play Gage." And I said, "Oh, oh, um, hmm, I haven't really thought of that. That's a." It's a really good idea. I'm like, yes. <laughs> so, so that's how Michael came into play. Yeah. <laughs> Roll camera, please. Oh dear. Thirty years of Shakespearean. <laughs> and this is what it's come to. This is what it's come to. Eric oh, no. Grundeman, who is the producer, uh, produced two shows in New Zealand: Hercules the in Hercules the Inedible Journeys. Incredible Journeys? What was it? Hercules. The incredible Journeys? No, it wasn't the Incredible Journeys. Hercules, the something Journeys. No, it wasn't the Incredible There you go. I was only in 100 and something. Wasn't it Incredible Journeys? No, Hercules, the... What the hell? Anyway, he produced that, which I was in one of the stars of. And Holy you don't shit. That's pretty cool. That is very cool. Was it? That was pulling up the seashell with Aphrodite on it.
And she comes out, and she was a babe. Oh, she was great. <laughs> Hercules, the amazing journeys? No. Anyway. Legendary. Legendary. Hercules, the legendary journeys. That's it. Thank God for that. Okay, so um, he present and um, Xena, warrior princess. She just wasn't legendary. She was just Xena. Um, anyway, he produced those two shows, Eric did, and, and I was um, the oldest friend of Hercules in um, the Hercules series. And uh, we, we became friends and colleagues and um, have known each other ever since. Oh, Eric, oh, it's so good to see you. <laughs> I leave for an hour and this is what, what happens. Think? I love it. Couldn't be closer. I mean, couldn't be further away from Katie. We could have the glasses on too, if you like. More intelligent look. Yeah, that's true. Because the rest of the outfit screams intelligence. <laughs> very, very it's just getting ready for the scene, man. No, I should be doing a fucking getting ready for the fucking scene, you know. Oh. Yeah. You want to see it? <laughs> more internet possibilities. <laughs> oh, man. What I love about this production is that, and in New Zealand. We tend to have that happening all the time, mainly because, um, you know, budgets are small. You know, necessity is the mother of invention all the time, so people are thinking up groovy ways to make something work, and look, it's, it's on this the whole time. So none of us are in it, we're only in it for the glamour. <laughs> That's why I was dressed like that before. Um, uh, so honestly, it's, it's, it's identical. I, I think the paperwork sounds more complex. The, um, <laughs> tax shit and all that sounds a lot more complex in America than it does in New Zealand. But um, the way, the process, the the friendliness, the exactly the same. This is going to just, I think this is completely overflowing with, you know, everybody in together. It's fantastic. All right, well then let's let's do it and let's, let's, do it. let's start looking for things okay. to do on the road and let's move all these other vehicles out of the way and we can angle in this direction and we can get the girls. Yeah, we can you know, do all them. If, if they're basically doing it on the road. What's that? I love it. Yeah. Swing it around and you can hit, you can just sort of test, see how hard you can go a bit lower. No, no, seriously, about there. Okay, now you swing that around and hit. hit. Oh, that's good. No, 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 it's great. I'm acting. So, so, look, so go, go for it. You really want me to come yeah, yeah, do that one and then do that yes, one. Yeah. Good morning. Oh, don't come How are you? That's all it takes. But if you make a big swing on that one, I can go to the ground. Okay. So it's like. Right oh, oh. Did I hit you too hard? No. Okay. Oh, got it. When you came up with the blood, I was like. No, no you can hit me okay. really hard. I'll get strong coming up. Okay. Yeah, so. Oh. so. Oh. That's good. That'll be good. Okay. I'll sell the shit out of it. Cool. Right. And, um, and uh, what else? That's about. <laughs> the thing about making punches look strong is if you do this, but if you come back first, bam, like really self, oh, that's it, and you can take a time, oh, I'll wait, I'll go, I'll go like this, oh, and you can do other, oh, that's nice, I love that shit, yeah, okay, all right, yeah, so anyway, okay, Encapsulating in one brave stroke the struggle for identity in a societal wasteland, Bitchlap carves this existential menage across the moral canvas in a blaze of unremitting alacrity. It's a salutary reminder of the folly of familiarity, and it's a welcome reappraisal of the cultural zeitgeist with tits and guns. Michael was born in England and lived in England, I think, till he was six or seven, until his parents, uh, you know, uh, immigrated to New Zealand. And so he's got that, and he was, he sort of ran with a rough crowd in, in England and all that kind of stuff. And one of the reasons they moved was they were like, geez, this guy, our, our little boy is probably going to end up being a, you know, a hooligan of the massive sorts and, and uh, possibly be, uh, you know, die before his time kind of thing. And so he's got all that stuff in him. But, um, Watching him play Gage is just music to our eyes. He's so funny. And he just brought so much weight to Gage yeah. that, you know, well exceeded certainly what I had mm. kind of pictured with the role. <laughs> You're a good guy then. Huh? You're a good guy then. Well, it's just the I like to think that I'm a reasonably <laughs> sane and well-adjusted person, even though the thing I do for a living is extremely ridiculous. I find myself standing in the desert in a G-string and kimono, but it's all for the higher purpose of art. <laughs> 
I can't tell you how many times I'd look over and Michael would be moving chairs, humping equipment, like if we were moving to a new location, if we were wrapping out. He was never that guy, you know, sitting in the chairs. I mean, he was just always there, just working and just doing what he can for the better of the film. Oh no, what's that? What is that? Mm. That's a tailbone. That's a little tailbone. Oh, well, then it's not human, is it? No, I don't think so. Oh, well, boring. <laughs> if it was human, we'd I be think it's good set dressing, though. I'm we found it. the evidence here. And the most, like I said, you know, the worst conditions. He taught our, the rest of our cast a lot of lessons about, about being there for the film. Being there for the film, the work is the work, and uh, this is what we all dream of, is actually making a movie and, 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 and embracing that. Even in its toughest points, you know, when, when you've got the wind, you know, when it's incredibly cold, you've got the sand blowing and you, you're dressed in very little clothing, you're, you know, you're, you're shooting a very long take or you're doing multiple takes or whatever and you're very, very cold and miserable. You know, he's always the guy down there, you know, with his face firmly planted in the, in the, uh, you know, in the mud or in the sand. Um, and with people, you know, can we get you a ferny pad? No, no, I'm fine, don't worry about me. You know? Yeah, because he knows that it's going to make the film great and that and Rick, Rick allows Rick to shoot the yeah. shot exactly the way he needs to. Without You see him hit the ground, it's like, oh, yeah. that looks like it hurt. Yeah. And it did. Again? Craft candy lamp. I was did it. Uh, one more, Rick. Yeah, Michael. You know, I have so many fond memories of Michael, but certainly one of the ones that will always stick out in my mind with him was was oh. him at the peak of his being abused by the girls and just looking like absolute hell, wind blowing sideways, his hand still in the trunk, and him sitting there on the ground. Blood in his crotch, probably. Blood by his on his crotch. Yeah, he was ball. just. And I was sitting there, you know, we were in between the girls, wait for the girls to be, you know, kind of their final looks, and I was sitting there with the camera on my shoulder just kind of shielding my face and I look up at Michael and he's sitting there and, and, and he's just, you know, just waiting on his mark, just waiting. And you look over and, and all of the girls, and you know, rightfully so because it was, we want the girls to look good. The whole umbrella, you know, the whole umbrella brigade around them and the hair makeup and just everybody just fawning, you know, just making sure they all look great. And Michael just, out of the sun. not a single just, just him by himself. No one, no umbrella shading him. But he just could have cared less. And so I looked at, you know, I looked at that. And I looked over at him. He looked over. He's just like, <laughs> and, but you know, the, uh, a lot of actors would have just, you know, blown a gasket to that. But he was just like, hey, look, you know, they got to look great. They got to look good for the film. Don't worry about me. I'm fine. Hell, look at me. I'm you know. And so it was, and we just kind of had a little chuckle to ourselves. Mm. But just, just a hammer. Gentlemen, that would be a picture wrap on Michael Hers. It's kind of weird me going because there's still all this movie to shoot. <laughs> it's like, okay, new family now. You know? Yeah, it's been good.